In this grasshopper tutorial, I'll be showing you everything you need to know in order to realize the power of Python for Grasshopper. All right, let's get started by sharing my screen and dropping a Python node on the canvas. To begin, let's mimic the functionality of this addition node. Uh, and as you can see here, we have two inputs, X and Y, but it's simple enough to rewrite those as A and B. And let's change the name of this output to match the addition node. And we'll leave this out for reasons you'll understand later. We can even change the name of this function to be a plus b. All righty. Now, let's input some numbers to this function by dropping some number sliders on the canvas. And interestingly enough, if you type slash slash and then any number you want, in, it will create a panel and you can and connect that panel to the input. And now let's connect a panel to the output just so we can see what the result of our function is. And we'll copy and paste that and put one for out. Now, if I right click on this function and open my editor, uh, you'll see that there's all this interesting information we, which we will come back to in a moment. But for the meantime, let's just set R equal to A plus B. You'll notice that R is the name of the output and A and B are the two inputs. And if we test this, you can see that there was an error. Float and stir, stir stands for string, are not supporting the addition operation. And so the reason for this error is because we need to tell Grasshopper what type of input A and B are. So if you go and right click on this input, go down to type hint and select float, a float is just a number with decimals. An integer is a number with no decimal places, but we're gonna to wanna to use floats for A and for B. And now you can see everything is working great. And 1.2 plus 565 is 566.2, great. And now there's no output to this out here, but the purpose of out is mostly to help you debug. I could, for instance, type print and then the classic hello world statement. And if I test this, you'll notice that appears at this output. And that's a, a classic way of figuring out where your program is going wrong. Now, you might be wondering, but what if I want to input a range of values into this function? Because you'll notice that a range can be input into any of these other functions. And, and the, the result is somewhat what you would expect. However, if you right click here and give this node list access, uh, nothing works, which is counterintuitive because uh, you are inputting a list. But the idea is that when you input a, a multiple items and one item, then this node is just gonna run a bunch of times independently, matching this one item up to each of these independent uh, items in the list, and then creating an output for each pairing. But now that I've given this node list access, it knows that, th that it doesn't simply need to operate on each individual item in the list, it needs to operate on the list as a whole, and there's no way to add a list to an individual number. So instead, we can open our editor, and we can say r equals, and then we'll make an empty list. And then we can iterate through every value in a. So we'll say for num in a, because a is a list. And then we can say r plus equals to add to r. And if you're, you can only add a list to a list to concatenate them. So we have to put our, our our result into a list to add it to the final result. And we'll just add num plus b. Now, if I test this, you'll notice that everything is working great. We're iterating through everything in a, and we're adding b to it and putting it in the result. If you're unfamiliar with Python, it might be nice to uh, refresh on the Python semantics because some of that uh, is not the purpose of this tutorial. Um, so now let's get to this import Rhino script, tax, Rhino script syntax as RS. Uh, what, what this means is we're importing a library 
and we're aliasing it or we're assigning it to the variable rs. So I can now go rs dot and access any function in this library. And if I type, if I press is ellipse and I want to know more about that function, I can go to help. And as soon as I type in this opening parenthesis, it will actually describe this function for me. And if you want an easier way of sort of exploring this library of functions in Rhino script syntax, simply copy and paste Rhino script syntax, open up a Chrome browser, copy and paste it into the URL, and you'll see there are developer docs right here. So if you want to know how to, for instance, extrude, you can look up extrude and there's all these different functions. Let's check out extrude curve. You'll notice that it takes in a curve ID and a path ID. You can just think of this as a curve and a path, although sometimes you'll, you'll notice them called curve ID or curve GUID, which stands for global unique identifier. See, as you can see, a GUID. But really, this is just how you reference a curve in, in Python. So now let's, let's hop back over here and explore a little bit of that Rhino functionality. I mean, that Rhino script syntax fun functionality. Um, let's make a, a node which rotates. So I'll drop a Python node and I'll input a line. And I'll give this line a start position at the origin. So I'll just construct a point, which is by default at the origin. And its direction is by default the z-axis and its length by default is one. But we could give it a, a unit y vector. So its direction is in the y-axis and let's give it a length of 100. All righty. And now we can delete this other, or actually this other input will be the the number of degrees that we're rotating by. So we'll call this the geometry for rotation. And we'll call this, oops, we'll call this degrees. And we'll input to begin with 90 degrees. And we'll plug in a geometry node to the output just to visualize our result. And as usual, a panel hooked up to this output so we can get feedback from our program. If our program errors, it's also convenient to know that those will show up here. So it, it's nice to leave this output variable uh, when you're working on uh, development. And then once you finalize your work, you can delete it right here. But for now, we'll leave our panel and let's get started scripting. But first, we should uh, specify that the type of this degrees variable is gonna be a float, and the type of this geometry variable, you can see by default is uh, a ghdoc object, which is pretty much just a, a geometry object, and that can actually remain as it is, but if you want to be specific and say, all right, we're only going to be rotating boundary representations or curves or meshes or surfaces, then you can specify that here. But I'll, I'll check, check the geometry base class because we know we can only be rotating geome geometry. All right, so let's open our editor. And we have all the inputs here to rotate. Um, so we'll just type rs dot rotate object. And this function, as you can see, if we go to our, our help, has some, has some parameters, which are the object we're rotating, the center point we rotate around, the rotation angle, an axis, and it returns a global unique identifier of the rotated object. Don't let this confuse you. This is pretty much just returning the rotated object. What that means is that we can set the result of this function or the result of our node, which is a equal to the result of this function, which is rs.rotateObject. You can see the first parameter is the object for rotation. So that's our geometry. The second is the center point, which we'll just leave as the origin. You can alter this in your own code, but 
in order to just create a point, all you have to do is put parentheses around it and type zero comma zero comma zero for the origin. Um, a list surrounded by parentheses is called a tuple and this is how they're represented in Python. Okay, the next thing is the rotation angle, which is a number in degrees. And so that'll be our degrees input. And finally, the axis we're rotating around. Uh, and an axis is actually represented the exact same way as a point. So we could simply type zero comma zero comma one. And now we're rotating it around the Z axis. We'll close up our function here and we'll test it. As you can see, now if I change the number of degrees that we're rotating by, this line changes its rotation. Uh, I, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down below. And as always, like and subscribe and have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.